We present Raptor, a foundation policy for quadrotor control. The motivation for our work is that humans are extremely good at adaptation. Let's take driving a car for an example. In the beginning, the driving is jerky and students often even stall the engine or come to rough stops. But after about six hours, one learns to drive smoothly. Over time, driving starts to feel natural and eventually becomes subconscious. Now, when they face a new car with totally different dynamics, they only need a few iterations to adapt to the difference in acceleration, braking, and steering response. Humans can adapt quickly by taking advantage of previous experiences. Similar to humans, reinforcement learning policies learn through trial and error, but don't have the same adaptation capabilities. Each RL policy is trained for a particular quadrotor. If we modify the dynamics by, for example, changing the payload, or if we want to deploy the policy onto a different quadrotor altogether, we need to perform system identification, update the simulator, and retrain a new policy from scratch. To overcome these challenges, we present our Raptor method for training an adaptive foundation control policy. We train the foundation policy by first sampling 1,000 quadrotor dynamics parameters from a distribution over realistic quadrotors. Then we train a thousand expert policies that are each specialized for one of the sampled quadrotors. The behavior of the dedicated expert policy is then distilled into the single foundation policy using meta-imitation learning. The resulting foundation policy can then be deployed from simulation to a broad range of real quadrotors that have not been seen during training. In the following, we will show extensive experiments to evaluate the adaptability and robustness of our method. Our method yields a single control policy that can adapt zero shot to a large range of real quadrotors. The resulting foundation policy is a tiny recurrent neural network, consisting of only about 2,000 parameters. And the identical set of neural network weights is used across all quadrotors. We demonstrate the deployment of the foundation policy onto 10 wildly different quadrotors from 30 grams to 2.8 kilograms. In the video you are seeing right now, we fly 6 out of the 10 at the same time, showing general reliability and robustness to turbulence. For direct, high-frequency motor control, we embed the foundation policy directly into the microcontrollers of the quadrotors. For this, we integrate the foundation policy with four of the most popular flight controller firmwares, PX4, Betaflight, CrazyFly, and M5 Stampfly. The quadrotors differ not only in weight and firmware, but also in motor type, brushless versus brushed, propeller type, two, three, and four blade, pusher versus puller configuration, soft versus rigid frame, and more. Even though the foundation policy is not explicitly trained for agile trajectory tracking, we find that it yields good tracking performance at different levels of agility. Here you can see 9 of the 10 quadrotors tracking a figure 8 trajectory of 1 by 2 meters with a 10 second interval. The 9 quadrotors you can see here consist of the 6 shown before, plus 3 additional ones including a large platform that weighs 1.2 kilograms without payload. We also test more agile trajectories like the one using a 5.5 second interval you're seeing right now. In addition to the nine mostly rigid drones, we also test the same foundation policy on a soft drone with a flexible frame. In the domain randomization stage of our method, we only sample quadrotors with rigid frames, but we find that the foundation policy also generalizes to flexible frames. You can see the quadrotor frame flexing due to the out-of-distribution yaw dynamics of the soft frame in the video. But we can see that the trajectory tracking performance remains good. In general, through the reward function of the experts, we find that the foundation policy does avoid high-frequency oscillations in the motor outputs. This keeps the motors cool and the energy usage down. We also test if the foundation policy generalizes to different propeller configurations than the ones it has seen during training. The distribution used for sampling quadrotors only includes samples with identical thrust curves across all four motors. But we find that even when changing one propeller from a two-blade to a three-blade, the policy still remains stable.
even under an unbalanced setup with two different three-blade propellers on one side and two regular two-blade propellers on the other side, the policy remains stable. Finally, we test three different three-blade propellers and leave only one original two-blade propeller remaining. We find that, while oscillating slightly with a low frequency, the foundation policy can still stably fly the quadrotor. Since the oscillations are relatively low frequency, the motors remain cool, even after flying for a prolonged time. We find that even with this challenging configuration of four different propeller types, the foundation policy can not only hover but still track a figure eight trajectory. To further verify the robustness of the foundation policy, we conduct outdoor tests at challenging conditions with wind at about seven meters per second, gusting to 10 meters per second. We find that the foundation policy reliably tracks the trajectories even when reaching up to 10 meters per second over ground and more than 15 meters per second relative to the wind. We also conduct outdoor trajectory tracking and hover tests with up to 1.2 kilograms of payload. The maximum configuration results in a takeoff weight of the X500 of about 2.4 kilograms, which is about 75 times more heavy than the Hummingbird, the lightest platform that we test. This shows the remarkable range of quadrotors which the foundation policy can adapt to zero shot. We also test the robustness of the foundation policy with respect to external disturbances. In this case, we poke the quadrotor leading to tilts of more than 90 degrees, but the foundation policy is still able to recover from even these grave disturbances. Poking is quite an adversarial disturbance, since the policy has not seen any shocks like the ones we induce here during training. We also find that the foundation policy handles resting one side of the tool on the two larger quadrotors gracefully. Furthermore, the policy maintains stable flight even when the tool is making contact with the propellers of the quadrotor. In addition to poking, we also test disturbing the quadrotors using a strong fan. We find that even on the lightweight and low power platforms like the Crazy Fly, the foundation policy is able to withstand strong wind disturbances. By accident, we observe that the foundation policy can even handle flying a smaller quadrotor closely below a large quadrotor, defying the turbulent airflow. To test the responsiveness of the foundation policy with respect to set point changes, we let the quadrotor build up a linear velocity of about five meters per second, and then suddenly change the set point to hover in place. We find that the policy can robustly recover from large set point deviations, even though it never saw discontinuities in the set point during training. To complete our exhaustive evaluation of the foundation policy, we finally test the yaw angle set point response. We find that it maintains snappy and stable yaw control. Please try out the foundation policy on your own quadrotors. It is very easy to integrate, for example, for using it as a baseline. You can also play around with the foundation policy in your browser. For that, please check out the web app at raptor.rl.tools. Thank you for watching.